Welcome back everyone to my England series on Football Manager 2017. In the last episode, I was in search of an assistant manager to join me on the touchline. I started off looking at Gary Neville, he rejected, and then I turned my attention to Mike Phelan, he also rejected. So I've decided to go with Steve Holland. I've pretty much promoted him from the under-21s assistant manager to assistant manager. This deal, this kind of promotion, we'll see Steve Holland continue his role at Chelsea as a coach, but also my assistant manager for the England national team. You look at his stats, the man management, the judging player ability and potential. It's not bad and he's got a good reputation as well. We should get on. So Mike Phelan has come back and rejected. Let's see if I can bring in another former United guy in Paul Scholes, just as a coach. Best used as attacking. It's not bad, although tactical and level of discipline, motivation, not the best. But it's ball control, technical side of things. It's pretty decent. But knowing Scholes, he's probably going to reject anyway. Let's see what he says. So Gary Neville's rejected the under-21s assistant manager and Scholes, yeah as expected, doesn't want to be any part of the England team. What do we have here then? That's a blow for Arsenal as Theo Walcott could miss the start of the season. It's a sprained ankle which he picked up during pre-season training. The 27-year-old felt awkwardly, could be out for four weeks. He was certainly in my plans for that friendly against Italy in just a couple of weeks' time. His morale's abysmal, still. It says we can, um, let's have a word with Theo then so we can speak to him. It looks like we're talking on the phone here. So, hello, Theo Walcott speaking. How come his morale superb now? What's that all about? I just heard about your injury and wanted to see how you're doing. I really appreciate you taking the time to call. The physio reckons I'll be out for around four weeks, as we already know. Well, you're in my thoughts, and I hope you get better soon. I could, I could be passionate about that. Well, you're in my thoughts, and I hope you get better soon. But we're just going to stay calm. There's no need to uh, go over the top. Okay, see you later. All right, not bad. It's not looking good for Arsenal and Liverpool at the moment, heading into the new season. Arsenal lost Theo, now Liverpool have lost Klein after he dislocated his jaw jaw in their pre-season match against Juve. He's going to be out for uh, three weeks, the 25-year-old, and he's said to be bitterly disappointed. Well, let's have a chat with him, and it's exactly the same. They do need to change this up, I think, for FM18. Just have a bit of variety in... Uh, What's said, not just between manager and player, but also between manager and press. So he's in my thoughts. I'll be thinking about him. Probably not. Oh, my word. It just gets worse and worse for Liverpool, doesn't it? They've lost Daniel Sturridge now. It's a double hernia. This is a big injury for uh, for Sturridge, who always seems to be on the sidelines. We've got another option here. Sounded pretty nasty. It's six weeks that he's out for. Double hernia. Okay, well, I've just said about you. It sounded pretty nasty and I wanted to see how you're doing. I'm devastated. Looks like I'll be out for at least six weeks. Well, you're in my thoughts and I hope you get better soon. Anyway, on to the start of the new season. Liverpool and Leicester have already played then. It finished 2-0 at Anfield. I'm attending the Tottenham Burnley game, but Bournemouth are playing Man City. Middlesbrough have got Watford. I feel as though there's probably more... English players that will be starting in this game that I will actually be using in the uh, in that Italy friendly and also the World Cup qualifiers. You've got Eric Dyer, I'm sure he'll start. Harry Kane, without a doubt. Danny Rose, also Deli Alley. All of these are going to be starting for Tottenham in this game. And then when you look at Burnley, there's only one player I want to look at, and that's where is he? It's Michael Keane. I know we've got the option of Gary Cahill, but he's getting on. He's going to have to be replaced soon, so Michael Keane, I think, would be perfect to uh, to step up there. So Tottenham, they've gone with Harry Kane up front, of course. Eric Dyer and Deli Alley, two English central midfielders start. Carl Walker and Danny Rose start. So we'll be watching their performance today. For Burnley, Michael Keane does start. They've also got Joey Barton, but chances of him getting in the England team? Yeah, very, very slim. 20 seconds gone already. Tottenham dominating as expected they'll probably win the league as well this season I'm not going to be putting much emphasis on the Premier League Son has just made it 1-0 as this is this is all about England this is the, an England series on FM17 but I'm just watching English players see how they perform how they get on ready for our uh, our friendly coming up very soon against Italy and we've got the World Cup qualifiers 
Harry Kane did get that assist for Son. Here's Ericsson who's just made it 2-0 to Spurs. No English players involved in that attack in that corner. Carl Walker with the throw to Deli Alley. Links up nicely with Ericsson. Ericsson finds Lamella. Here is Eric Dyer now on the ball. Picks out Walker. And it's Harry Kane who almost made it 3-0 to Spurs just before half time. Are we going to see someone like Kane on the score sheet? He has to get on the score sheet, surely. Lamella with the corner. And it's headed away by Flanagan. Lamella again finds Walker. It's been an average start to the season for Michael Keane and for Burnley. And trailing two goals to nil here at White Hart Lane. Michael Keane with a 6.5 rating. They've been really up against it. Against some real quality players. Carl Walker, Deli Ali, Dyer, Harry Kane. Also average for Spurs today. Although they've got half an hour or so remaining. So they might be able to turn that around. Okay, Andre Gray's just come on to replace Sam Vokes. Andre Gray, another English international. Wan Yama's come on to replace Deli Ali. So that's all we'll see of him in today's game. Not much happening here. They've scored the two goal spurs. And I think that's going to probably be it. Ericsson with the corner. Swings it in. Son, who's been brilliant for Spurs today. Here is Kane. Can he turn on that? He does. No, well done, Keane. Good challenge there. Winning the ball back for his team. Hoofs it clear, though. Watching Keane track back. He's playing out wide now for some reason. There we go. He's back into his position. Goodmanson. Been put under a bit of pressure here. Forced to uh, hoof up the field again. It's just been one-way traffic for Spurs. Here is Danny Rose. And that's full time. 2-0 to Spurs. Just a few injury problems then. Uh, we've got Eric Dyer and Nathaniel Klein returning to full fitness very soon, full training. So they'll be ready for the international friendly against Italy. But Daniel Sturridge and Jack Butland will most certainly miss out. What else we got here then? England boss faces selection headache on the 25th of August. I'm going to be simming ahead. Got to select the England team that will face Italy and Malta. The game against Malta is a World Cup qualifier. Cole Jenkinson, Glenn Johnson, Andy Carroll, Welbeck and Sturridge will definitely miss out through injury. And there is some good news as Theo could be on his way back from injury. Now, this is the advised 23-man squad that Holland has put out there. He's got Joe Hart, Fraser Forster and Ben Foster as our goal is. Midfield, Raheem Sterling, Deli Alley. I'm not sure about Saido Berahino, though. Um, we could probably bring in James Ward-Prowse. Let's go to the national poll. Let's see what we've got here. I would love the opportunity to mix things up, use some of the under-23s like Tom Davis. But then I've got to think about winning that game against Malta. We need those first three points. Maybe I'll bring Jermaine Defoe into the selection. It's done. The 23-man squad has been picked. There are a few new names in there, such as Jordan Pickford of Sunderland. I might, might start him against Italy, seeing that it is only a friendly. Or I might start him against Malta. Then we've got, in defence, Nathaniel Klein is in there. Eric Dyer, Phil Jones, Danny Rose, Luke Shaw, Smalling, Stones and Walker. In midfield, Ali, Henderson, Lalana, Jesse Lingard, Redmond. We've got Rooney, Captain, Sterling, Theo Walcott. And Jermaine Defoe has been called up once again for England. He is in the 23-man squad. And if you ask me, he's not a bad option to have on the bench, if need be. Look at that finish in 16. First touch 14, the composure 16. He's still got it, even though he's at the age of 33. We've got Harry Kane, it's a must, and Marcus Rashford, who could play out wide. So 23 players selected. We've got Italy first, then Malta in the, uh, the World Cup qualifiers. Let's confirm that. Done. So there we go. Squad selected. Really looking forward to this game against Italy now. It's going to be a tough one. Let's see what the press have said. So Peyton announces England squad. England manager Peyton has named his squad for the matches against Italy and Malta. Manchester United left winger Jesse Lingard could be in line to make his first appearance for England along with Nathan Redmond and Jordan Pickford. There are otherwise no real surprises to my squad and the English fans are sure to be excited at the prospect at competitive international football. Yeah, man, really looking forward to this now. I'm getting hyped seeing that it's so close. The England under-21 squad has been announced. You're looking at Mason Holgate, Will Hughes of Derby, James Will Prowse in there, Tammy Abram from Bristol, and there is the under-19 squad also. 
Right then, that is it for this episode. Short and sweet. Join me for the next one as we will be playing Italy and Malta. Thanks for watching.